We're going to talk about some petroglyphs today and compare them to Mimbre's pottery vessels. This is, of course, Kokopeli. You see him frequently in petroglyph. And he always has the humpback. And in petroglyph, you always see him with the flute, insect-like characteristics, usually antenna, and the humpback. Now, it's different in Mimbre's art. There's another Kokopeli, humpback again. There's his flute. And in this case, he has knobby knees. And we often see that on, pet, on uh, Coco Paley petroglyphs. It could be arthritis. I've examined hundreds of skeletons uh, in the Southwest, and there's a lot of arthritis. We see lots and lots of evidence of that. Remember, humpback, flute, and sometimes uh, insect characteristics. There's another humpback, flute, insect-like characteristics. Now, let's look at some Mimbre's ones. In Mimbre's, he never has the flute. He always has this little mantle of authority. A lot of characters in Mimbre's art have that little mantle of authority. It just means that person's in charge. But he always has the humpback, uh, very often a, a, an erection, and kind of cross-dressing. We see this kind of female characteristics. In some of the warrior twin stories, there's also cross-dressing going on. Brother Younger uh, often cross-dresses as a female character. Now here's this actual staff. This was one Garrick Mallory encountered in 1880 when he researched the Southwest. And this is the actual little mantle of authority. We see that uh, very frequently in Petroglyph and on Mimbre's depictions. Corn man. And I'm gonna show you I'll get a better shot of that. Here we go, corn man. In Meanberry's art, this is a grid dot pattern. They use dots in the petroglyphs. Notice the insect-like characteristics again. This is a corn man. Here it is in Meanbray's art, the grid dot corn pattern. Notice this stance. This is important. We're gonna talk about this. This is the prayer stance. You see folks like this in this position. This is prayer. Here we have several examples. There's the, our corn man again. There's another one. Same thing. Prayer stance, grid dot corn pattern. And another, and notice, uh, there again, prayer stance. This fellow's holding a rainbow and a cloud. This hat has often been called a cloud hat. It has a little turkey tail attachment. And the zigzag checkerboard pattern, that's the Milky Way or Starry Sky Pathway of the Warrior Twins. This is a very interesting petroglyph. This, usually you cannot date petroglyphs. We've tried all kinds of experiments with the patina, uh, and we, it's just really, you can't date them. Unless there's something in the depiction that you know arrived in the Southwest at a certain time, like for example, a depiction of a horse. Well, if you see the picture of the horse, you know it had, the petroglyph had to have been made post-1540 uh, when Coronado walked up the Little Colorado River with his entourage. That's when horses arrived. So if you see a depiction of a horse, then you know it's post-1540. Now, this one's a good one because this is a Navajo depiction. This is a Navajo sand painting. Normally, these are destroyed. They don't, uh, they, they'll make the depiction, then they rub them out and uh, destroy the depiction. Uh, after the ceremony. But this one uh, was done in petroglyph. This is a Navajo sand painting. Now the Navajo, the Athabascan speakers, the Apache and the Navajo, they came down to the Southwest late in prehistory. Uh, what they did, the, whoever made this glyph was an Athabascan speaker and they incorporated this older glyph. You see how this is darker and this is lighter? That's because this glyph is older. It has a little surface patina on the actual glyph. So you know this one's older. And what happened was this Athabascan speaker made his prayer stance again, prayer stance again, depiction, and he incorporated, or she possibly, incorporated in the hand of, of, of this figure, grasp this older image. This gives that image the power connected with this one. Very cool glyph.
Here he is again, a little closer. I think the slide isn't backwards, but he's incorporating the power of this horned this figure. Let me get that really close up. In the hand. This is just a standard little anthropomorphic, you know, little man standing there. Now, we're going to show some ambiguity between men and lizards in petroglyph. We see this all the time. Now, of course, in Mimbres, we see animal combinations all over the place. So, but in, in uh, petroglyph, we see this man-lizard form all the time. This one, I actually think, is a horned toad or a horned lizard with a big round belly. Here's one in Mimbres art, horned toad or horned lizard. Notice that little life spiral in the center. I'm going to talk about that a little later. But very similar. Big in prayer stance. The ambiguity is this tail penis thing. We see in uh, Petroglyph, we see this all the time. We see anthropomorphic figures with what could be a tail or could be a penis. And we see a lot of lizard, man ambiguity. I'm going to show you a few of those. Here we have Probably a lizard, but in prayer stance again with this long tail. But this ambiguity with the tail is, off, is also confused because there are a lot of lizards in the southwest and around the world where if you grab them by the tail, the tail will detach and the lizard gets away and the predator just gets to eat the tail. And this stub tail thing further confuses uh, this ambiguity in the petroglyph between humans and lizards and I'm going to show you another one. This is a membrane lizard. We see these all the time in membrane art. Ah, here we go. Now this is another human anthropomorphic figure, penis slash tail, probably a penis. Notice the position. Now there's a pair arms up, but the legs are also up. If you see these legs splayed up, that means he is in transition. He's probably dying. Uh, either going from one world to another, one realm to another, back to the underworld. If the legs are splayed up like that, that person is in transition, usually dying. Here is a very standard anthropomorphic, ambiguous uh, penis. This almost looks like the Chinese character for man. But here again, prayer stance, legs down, he's alive, and probably a penis, not a tail. But this, we see this mixing all the time. Okay, here's a person that's very, has a very elaborate headdress and prayer stance again. And this penis tail, this third leg, so to speak. See, all the time. Very common. Prayer stance again in a mean brace bowl. And this person is transitioning from a human form to some sort of fishtailed beaver-headed creature, probably a trance thing going on here, hallucination. This is a very lizard-like prayer stance figure. Here's another standard anthropomorphic. Some people say this is like determined or something. I don't go that far out. But here it is, St. John's polychrome bowl, great big communal bowl. And here he is again, this three-legged, probably legs and penis, anthropomorphic figure. This is the standard man representation in Southwest iconography. This, this bowl is a little bit underfired prehistorically. It should be a brighter orange. This vessel needs to be restored. I probably will do a video when I do that. I have to put this back together better correctly. Usually your petroglyphs are in panels like this, with all kinds of stuff going on, and you really can't tell who did what when. Uh, you can tell a little bit by the coloration, but it's really hard to say. And this is one of the confusions, confusions about this. We tried to date these things. We tried experiments with, uh, you know, trying to experiment with the patina and see if we could change things. But the problem is it depends on which way the rock faces and how much water runs on the rock, and was it a rainy, you know, rainy in the last 10 years? It's hard, very hard to do. Stance figures, here's another one, prayer stance, anthropomorphic. Another one. 
And two very nice figures, horned figures. Horns are power. Horns are power. And prayer stance again. This is interesting, these curly arm things. This, this is probably more of an insect. And the multi legs and the curlies. They look like arms in this headdress. This is probably, this could actually be a, uh, a scorpion figure. The Mimbres images we saw today were painted between 1000 AD and 1280 AD. And if you want, there's a lot more of them, and we're going to have other, uh, other videos you can see. But if you want to get a copy of the book, Mimbres Mythology, there's a lot of these images we're going to be showing. Uh, just email me. And the address is in the uh, description in this video. It's just kunkel uh, at hotmail.com. That's C-U-N-K-L-E. And just email me and I'll, I'll sign a copy and make sure you get it. Thanks for watching today. Give me a like, if you like.